Now let's turn up the heat on this weapon showcase. Let's get into the shotguns. Let's go over the shotgun shells first. Shot shells, used for Benelli M3S. Okay, it's a pretty basic description, but that's okay. And of course, just like the handgun, the shotgun also gets enhanced ammo. So let's go over that as well. 12 gauge shot shells added with powerful powder created with the reloading tool, used for Benelli M3S. All right, so while we're still on the subject of ammo, I gotta go over the gunpowders again because gunpowder B is specific to shotgun ammo. And I gotta give you the many different amounts that you could possibly make with this. So just like gunpowder A, your skill level increases as you keep creating ammunition from gunpowder B. Once you do it eight times on the ninth attempt to create ammo, it'll ask you for enhanced ammo and you can start making that. So for regular ammo, gunpowder B, you can make as little as 7 shells and as much as 11 shells. With double B, you can make as little as 18 shells and as much as 27 shells. With triple B, you can make as little as 30 shells and as much as 45 shells. Finally, 2A's 1B can create as little as 20 shells and as much as 30 shells. So the multiplier, it's not exactly the same as the A. I think the gunpowder A has higher multipliers considering handgun ammunition is way weaker than shotgun shells. So to even it out, they didn't increase the multiplier nearly as much. So now when it comes to enhanced ammo, with a single B, you can make as little as eight enhanced shells and only as much as nine enhanced shells. It doesn't give you a wide variety there. With double B, as little as 20 enhanced shells and as much as 23 enhanced shells. With triple B, as little as 33 enhanced shells and as much as 39 enhanced shells. And finally, two A's and one B makes as little as 22 and as much as 26 enhanced shells. So that being said, while handgun, the highest quantity you can get is from a double B and one A, it's not the same for shotgun where it's the double A plus B. Instead, the triple B seems to be your best bet if you want to make the most shotgun ammo. Alrighty, enough about that. Now let's finally go over the actual gun, the shotgun. Benelli M3S, an easy to carry sawed off shotgun. It uses 12 gauge shot shells. Alrighty. Now this is based off of the Benelli M3 Super 90. Now of course, in game, it's modified and it has wooden grips, but otherwise its base model is the Benelli M3 Super 90, which this is a weapon we will see quite often in the series from here on out. But this is its first official appearance. So the location of the shotgun is in this alleyway when you come to this door. Oh, and look who it is. Brad runs out of it. You gotta defeat all these zombies bursting out. Once you defeat all the zombies, and you come down here to the basement, and here it is. It's on the body of this SWAT member or officer. Shotgun. Now in easy mode, you can get the shotgun even earlier. It'll be available in the first item box you come across, as you can see right there with plenty of shotgun shells to spare, I might add. And it's worth mentioning that Mikhail has the shotgun in his loadout when playing as him in the Mercenaries. And of course he has a special animation with it, check this out. All right, so here's Jill holding it in game, looking really nice. Let's test it out. All right, now of course, let's see if we could do a quick shot maneuver with it. No problem. All right, so just like the handgun, I'll hold off on showing it with enhanced ammo until we first do a test with its regular ammo against enemies. However, zombies are too weak against it, so we're gonna up the enemy a bit. I'm gonna test the shotguns on Drain Deimos. <laughs> so.
So, between four drain demos, it took between two and three shotgun shells to defeat them in hard heavy mode in the NTSC version on the PC. Not bad. Now we're gonna return to the hub and check out the shotgun with enhanced shotgun shells. All right, so now let's combine the enhanced shells with this thing and check it out. Oh, I forgot, I gotta empty it first. There we go. So Benelli M3S enhanced. Enhanced shotgun. It is loaded with enhanced shells. I could have told you that. So let's check it out with the enhanced ammo now. Now you couldn't tell right there because I was right up against a table, but let me show you firing like this. <laughs> it knocks her back a good bit, kind of like the boomstick in RE2. And also you notice that the shell casing is blue instead of red. Neat little detail they put in right there. Let's try the quick fire with the enhanced ammo. Damn, you're unstoppable if you do that. All right, now we gotta test that enhanced ammo on some drain demos. Alright, so all four drain demos that time took two shells. So that does prove that it is more powerful in the sense that one of the tests with the regular ammo took three. So there is a small increase in firepower. I don't know specifically how much, and it would be represented better on maybe some more powerful enemies such as Nemesis, I suppose. But regardless, it is, without a doubt, more powerful. So that's gonna go ahead and conclude the regular shotgun. Alright, now for the next and last shotgun. Now, this is another one, just like the Eagle 6.0 of the handguns, that you have to get parts for first. So, they're depicted as the M37 parts A and B. These are acquired by defeating Nemesis four and five times. His fourth and fifth drops are these parts. Now to go over these parts individually first, M37 parts A, a wooden stock, and a magazine tube. And then M37 parts B, Parts for a lever action gun. The barrel is cut short. Interesting. Combine them, and you got the Western Custom. So here you go. Western Custom M37, equipped with a special reload system and is effective for close range battle. It uses 12 gauge shot shells. All right. Now, believe it or not, this is based off of a real life weapon. The Winchester 1892 Mare's Leg, according to imfdb.org. Here it is in game. <laughs> a puny looking shotgun, I might say. Almost the size of a pistol. All right, let's get Jill's pose with it. All right, let's give it the old test. You'll be surprised on how this one operates. All right. Now, that's crazy in itself, but watch what happens when I do the quick fire maneuver. <laughs> you go nuts with that. All right, just like the Eagle, it cannot use the enhanced shotgun ammo, so you gotta make a compromise there. Let's go ahead and test this thing on some drain demos.
Okay, well, that was pretty good consistency. Between two and three shotgun shells with the Western Custom to take down Drain Deimos. It was a perfect two twos and two threes. All right, so that's definitely a good average right there. So that's indicative that it may be just a tad weaker than the regular shotgun. I mean, it kind of makes sense looking at its size and the fact that you get a higher fire rate with it. So maybe it would only be fair to lower another statistic just a tiny bit. But either way, it's still a very useful shotgun with how fast you could use it. The only sucky thing is you have to reload each time. But the reload animation is faster, so I think it evens out. Alrighty then. Well, that's going to conclude the Western Custom, as well as all shotguns. Now for the one and only Magnum, my favorite weapon class. First, let's go over its bullets. 44 Magnum rounds, powerful bullets for the revolver. Used for Smith & Wesson M629C which is this right here. Let's check it out. Smith & Wesson M629C, a large stainless steel revolver. A classic type equipped with weights to reduce the recoil. It uses 44 Magnum bullets. All right, pretty descriptive. So this of course is based off the real life Smith & Wesson Model 629, classic. That's what the C stands for. This, I believe, is the first Smith & Wesson to be featured in a Resident Evil game. So Resident Evil 3 Nemesis does definitely have a lot of firsts of things that are going to become common throughout the rest of the franchise. So gunpowder does play a role with Magnum Ammo. The only combination of gunpowder that makes Magnum Ammo is Triple C. Once you have this, use the reloading tool. There you go. You got some Magnum bullets. Now, since it requires triple C, and there are up to 21 gunpowder A's in the game and 17 gunpowder B's, you can only have a maximum of 17 gunpowder C's. Three doesn't go into 17, the most it can go into is 15 out of there, so you can create magnum ammo a maximum of five times. And the level improvement still exists, even with magnum ammo, I tested it off camera. So with five potential times to make magnum bullets, the first three times you'll make 24, but the other two times you will make 26 magnum rounds. So just to put that out there. Now the first opportunity to get the magnum is in the star's office, the same exact star's office from Resident Evil 2. You should recognize this location very well from how many weapons were in this locker in Resident Evil 2. Well, Resident Evil 3 brings it back and there's two more, one of which could be the magnum, as you can see right here. So if you got the grenade launcher there instead, then the Magnum will be here at the substation. Now to get it, you have to open the right shutter over there. The code for that is blue, red, blue, red. And there's no sound for the shutter because I turned off the BGM and for some reason the devs made the shutter sound part of the BGM. And you go to this locker, there it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> and just like the shotgun, if you're playing in easy or light mode, you can get the magnum as early as the first item box. Once again, with plenty of bullets to spare. And it's worth mentioning that Mikhail can also use the magnum in his loadouts when playing as him in the mercenaries. Alright, here it is in game, Jill holding it, looking really nice. Let's get her pose with it. Just tapping a revolver against your leg, let's go. Alright. Here we go for the weapon test. Reloading Magnum revolvers is always one of the most satisfying things to do in the Resident Evil games, in my opinion. Now let's try the quick shot maneuver with this. Yeah, all six bullets. So this is its own class and I've decided with the firepower of this thing, we're going to take it up a huge notch and I'm going to test this against Nemesis. <laughs> Stars. 
takes 14 shots from the Magnum to take down this instance of Nemesis. Nemesis is one powerful mofo every time you fight him, but considering just 14 bullets from this thing, won't take that long to defeat him. All right. Well, that's it for the Magnum for regular testing. But of course, I gotta honor my Magnum headshot tradition, and we gotta test this on a standard zombie and show the explosive headshot in amazing optimal slow motion. So enjoy. <laughs> Headshot. All right, that is going to conclude the one and only Magnum. You want stars? I'll give you stars. All right. Now for potentially one of the most complex weapons in this game, the grenade launcher. This is going to start the final weapon class of this entire showcase, explosive weapons. First, let's go over all the different types of ammunition, because being a grenade launcher, just like its two predecessor games, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis has more than one type of grenade round. So first, let's go over standard grenade rounds. Grenade burst rounds. Standard bullets that scatter fragments when they hit the target used for HKP grenade launcher, which is what this is. Now, you don't see any other rounds here because first I wanna show you how you can make rounds using gunpowders because they are involved. So you have two ways to make special grenade rounds. You could either have these combinations of gunpowders, AC, BC, and CC. They make flame rounds, acid rounds, and freeze rounds respectively, freeze being the newest type of round. But another way you can create them is to combine gunpowder with grenade rounds. So I'll show you both of those right now. First, AC with the reloading tool. Okay, now normally you would only make 10 rounds if you're doing it for the first time. The reason I got 11 is because the level improvement still exists even if you make grenade rounds with Jill. I'm actually on the first multiplier right now when it comes to grenade rounds right at this moment. So that's why I just got 11. So now I should get 11 acid rounds right here. And potentially 11, possibly 12 freeze rounds here. Or 13, my bad. So I just got the next multiplier right there. So now we got all the other types of rounds here, but let me show you combining with the grenade rounds as well. There you go. And once again, I was already a level up when it came to that kind of combination. Normally it would only be six rounds you first create, not seven. All right, so let me go over the other rounds. Flame rounds. Special bullets whose warhead is filled with powerful napalm gel. Used for the HK grenade launcher, we already knew that. Grenade acid rounds. Special bullets whose warhead is filled with anti-creature sulfuric acid. Used for the grenade launcher. <laughs> All right, I love these descriptions, honestly. Finally, the freeze rounds. Special bullets whose warhead is filled with ultra low temperature liquid nitrogen. Used for HKP grenade launcher. Very technical terms being used here. These are the most scientific descriptions I've ever seen so far in this series, possibly in the entire series. I guess we'll find out as we go down the road. But yeah, pretty awesome descriptions, I have to say. Some of my favorites. Okay, now for the hard part. I need to explain to you, again, the maximum level improvement and how much of each type of ammo you can make. So, if you go the reloading tool route, you start making 10 rounds, and you can increase it to a maximum of 15 rounds if you're doing the gunpowder method with the reloading tool. Now, if you're going the grenade round route where you combine gunpowders with grenade rounds, as I told you already, at base level, you can make six with a single gunpowder, and you can make a maximum of 10 when you reach maximum level. The cool thing is you can also combine doubles and triples with grenade rounds. You cannot combine double A and B or double B and A with grenade rounds. It won't let you. So you may notice here that unlike all of the mixing level improvement I've shown so far, in this particular case, it takes until six mixes before you get a level improvement. I do not know why this is the case for single gunpowder mixed with grenade rounds, because as soon as I go over to doubles, it returns to form. I do not know why this is the case. 
I can only assume maybe it's because of the sheer amount of single gunpowders you can acquire in the game. Because think about it, 21A plus 17B for a total of 38 individual gunpowders. But it still doesn't make sense because the multiplier catches back up eventually anyway. As you see when I go over the doubles here. When it comes to double, you can make a minimum of 12 rounds and a maximum of 20 rounds. And finally with triple, you can make a minimum of 18 rounds and a maximum of 30 rounds. There you go. That is as convoluted as it gets, but I've covered every single base I can there. So since there's no more ammo mixing to be shown, now's a good time for me to tell you that the total amount of ammunition that you could create by any means doubles if you're playing in easy or light mode. That also goes for the ammo pickups that you get throughout the game. And another thing worth mentioning, while the numbers I provided of the maximum amount of ammo you can create was the legitimate maximum level, this game of course also has a debug menu where you can modify the inventory, and you can infinitely mix as much ammo and gunpowder and grenade rounds as you want. That being said, you can level up beyond the threshold when it comes to handgun and shotgun ammunition when you just use gunpowders A and B. But because you can't do it legitimately, I'm not going to deep dive into that, and I'm just simply going to mention it like I did. Alright, now we can finally go over the actual grenade launcher. HKP Grenade Launcher. A small size grenade launcher developed for police use. It is loaded with burst rounds. So obviously that part of the description can change depending on which type of round you have loaded in it, but I'm not going to bother showing you every type of round when it's a single word that's going to be changed. Now, this grenade launcher in particular is not based on any single real-life weapon. However, it seems to be inspired or a hybrid of two different real-life launchers. It does contain parts of the M79 that we know from Resident Evil 2, but it also has some elements of what's known as the Deftech 1315. A really interesting looking launcher indeed. So specifically what makes it a hybrid, according to imfdb.org, it's based on a Deftech 1315 37 millimeter gas gun with the addition of a horizontal foregrip, OD furniture, and the tube and folding grenade sight from the M79 grenade launcher. The grenade launcher and the Magnum are interchangeable when it comes to their locations. So just like the Magnum, you could either get it here in the locker in the star's office, there it is, or you could once again open the right shutter at the substation and get it in the locker there. There you go. So here's Joe holding it, looking nice. Let's get her pose with it. Alright, so nothing left to do but to test it. Now being in the grenade launcher, once again, the focus is on the round that I fire, not necessarily firing the weapon. So I'm going to aim it this way so we can see the round explode on the wall over here. Here we go. Alright, now there's no reload animation outside of you loading each individual round, so I'm gonna have to go in here and load it manually. So that was regular grenade rounds, now let's try flame rounds. The thing about the flame rounds is, upon impact, they do scatter extra flames that could cause extra damage. Now for the acid rounds, and unlike the freaking handgun or shotgun with enhanced ammo, you can change ammo types at will. You don't have to empty the weapon first, so that's really nice. And finally, the freeze rounds, the newest type of rounds. These, I have to say, no pun intended, are the coolest. And they also have scattering abilities, as you can see right there. All right, now let's try the quick shot maneuver with grenade launcher. Okie dokie, so a large variety of rounds there. This is going to be fun to test on the enemy I chose. I'm going to test all four of these rounds on our boy Nemesis. <laughs> So 
so it took 16 individual grenade rounds to defeat Nemesis with the grenade launcher. Now let's switch over to flame rounds. So it took 12 flame rounds from the grenade launcher to defeat Nemesis. Now you might think that indicates that it's more powerful than the regular grenade rounds, but remember that the flame rounds do scatter damage after impact, and that was definitely contributing a little bit there because you saw him wince in pain a few times. So just keep that in mind. Now let's move on to acid rounds. <laughs> So it took 13 acid rounds to defeat Nemesis with a grenade launcher. And once again, you might think that indicates that it must be a little weaker than the flame rounds. But consider the fact that acid does not have scatter damage, unlike flame rounds. So if you ask me, if you're talking about the raw round, acid is either the same power as flame or more powerful. So far in the series, flame was usually the weakest round of the bunch, but in this game it's starting to look like that's the regular grenade round. Anyway, let's move on to the freeze rounds. <laughs> So it only took 10 freeze rounds from the grenade launcher to defeat Nemesis. So out of all the rounds, this test took the least amount of rounds. The freeze rounds have scatter damage just like the flame rounds did. So it's possible the raw round may be at worst the same as the acid round, but I can't really test it with just the raw round. So these overall tests, what the numbers show you, you might as well take them for how they are because it's hardly gonna be a situation where you don't deal scatter damage with the rounds that scatter. Now regardless of these tests, this was just one instance of Nemesis. You fight him many times throughout the game, and there's other sorts of enemies that may take more or less depending on what they are. For example, grenade rounds is a for all round. It would be good to defeat smaller enemies such as drain demos, maybe even hunters, or groups of zombies. Flame rounds of course are good against giant spiders. Acid rounds are good for boss type enemies. I believe acid rounds are actually the strongest against the gravedigger out of all the rounds, I wanna say. And finally, freeze rounds are really good against nemesis and other boss type enemies. Alrighty then. Well, that's gonna officially conclude the grenade launcher, one of the most complicated weapons in the game. Now for the next explosive weapon, the mine thrower. But first let's go over its ammo, the MT rounds. Special bullets that burst if anyone other than the user approaches, thanks to the equipped sensor used for mine thrower. All right, pretty interesting. Now to go over the mine thrower itself. A prototype weapon made by Umbrella's armament department. It uses special bullets equipped with a sensor. All right, now the mine thrower is completely fictional, so it's not based on any real life weapon. Now you must be wondering, why do I have these in the inventory, the infinite bullets? Well, that is because something special happens if you combine these with the mine thrower. Which, by the way, again, as I went over the assault rifle, to get the infinite bullets, playing on New Game Plus, you have to drop Nemesis seven times, where he gives you seven total drops. On the seventh drop, you'll have the infinite bullets. But I'll go over that later, once I need to go over the other version of the mine thrower. So for now, the location of the mine thrower is in the clock tower first floor main hall. This luxurious view right here. And as you can see, it is next to the body of an Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service mercenary. And once you pick it up, you also get a file off of him. Now just a quick mention, if you do play in easy mode, instead of the mine thrower, there'll be a wad of shotgun ammo right here. Here's Jill holding it in game, looking really interesting. And now let's get her with her pose. <laughs> Clipping her waist. And now let's go ahead and test it out. Now, unfortunately, I can't use it to its fullest because it requires enemies to be used properly. So this is very similar to the spark shot from Resident Evil 2. But regardless, let's go ahead and test fire it.
and it doesn't have a reload animation, unfortunately, so you have to manually reload it. Ooh, check this out. Reloading will cause the unexploded mines to disappear. Okay to proceed? That's cool, so it gives you a warning in case you have unexploded mines. Of course, there's no enemy in this hub, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now, I'm gonna see if there's a quick fire maneuver with it. Oh, there sure is. Pretty fast, too. Now, something to point out. I discovered this off camera. If your mine thrower is only partially unloaded and you try to reload it, check this out. Shells still remain in the cartridge. Reload unavailable. Denied. So you have to empty the mine thrower before you could reload it again. This is throwing back a little bit to the original grenade gun in RE1, where you had to unload it before you could reload it with any other round. Honestly, really stupid. So, being unable to properly test it in this environment, we're gonna go ahead and go to the enemy testing. However, I can't test it against Nemesis, even though it's an explosive weapon, because considering you get it so late in the game in the clock tower when I showed you the location, I think you can only have a maximum of 18 mine thrower rounds. And I tested it against Nemesis off camera. That is not enough rounds to defeat him. So we're gonna have to choose a different enemy to test this on. So I'm gonna test it on zombies just to show you what happens when they explode. And then I'm gonna choose a specific enemy just for this weapon, the Hunter Gammas. <laughs> Okay, so that's a great demonstration of where it does become useful. So once it attaches to the enemy, it gives you like two, three seconds before detonation. Now the thing to be careful about, even though I didn't successfully show it there, is if Jill is too close to that detonation, she will get injured herself. So you gotta be careful. But yeah, you saw the blast radius affected all the zombies surrounding the one zombie I fired it upon. That was really neat. Get some really good results with that splash damage. All right, that's demonstrating its use. Now let's test it against a slightly stronger enemy. Now let's try Hunter Gamma. Okay, so it's kind of complicated results there, but it seems on average that these Hunter Gammas are gonna die with two mines being stuck to them, but only one detonation, if that makes sense. Alrighty, well that's all I'm gonna do for this mine thrower because it is not a very good weapon in my opinion. In fact, if anyone has seen my full play of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, it single-handedly got me killed in one of my playthroughs for trying to use it on hunters. So, I regard it as one of the worst weapons in the game. That's just my personal opinion, has no bearing on your own. So, now we're gonna return to the hub and we're gonna find out what happens when you combine the infinite bullets with this mine thrower. Bam. Now, it is the Mine Thrower Enhanced. A Mine Thrower loaded with special bullets that have Auto Trace feature. All right, here's another thing though. If you look at it very carefully, it actually has a lighter shade now of blue than it did previously before it was enhanced. It also has this special red marking on the stock. So there is a small difference of appearance when it comes between the regular Mine Thrower and the Mine Thrower Enhanced. All right, so being infinite, let's go ahead and fire away and test it out as is now. has a slightly higher fire rate than its regular counterpart. And of course, there's no reload. And there isn't a quick shot maneuver for this thing. So as you can see, it explodes on impact now instead of sticking to the wall. So I could actually easily show you getting injured with it. Ah, she's already in caution. And now she's in danger. Now, you cannot die from this weapon, no matter how many times you explode yourself. You can only put yourself down to minimum health points. So now, literally anything that can kill me will kill me. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Now, let's go ahead and test this mine thrower as is on the same two enemies. First, some zombies, and then a hunter gamma. <laughs> All 
All right, so with the auto trace feature, this thing has so much power initially that it'll decimate zombies before the mine even explodes. I just decimated this line of zombies and the explosion took out the legs of one of them. And then that first set of zombies, none of them died by an actual explosion. They all died just from the mine going around and <laughs> you know what this thing reminds me of? Yondu's arrow from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> All right, now let's test it against Hunter Gammas. Once again, I don't think the explosion is what's gonna kill them. I think I'm just gonna find out how many mines going through them it takes to defeat them. Okay, so both Hunter Gammas took two mines each to be defeated. And again, as I predicted, that was from just the mine hitting them and going through them. Neither of them died from the actual explosion. If the mine had looped back around then exploded on them, it probably would have only taken one mine, to be honest. <laughs> So yeah, I just tested it on this batch of Hunter Betas, and two of them actually died by the explosion. <laughs> well, that's ultimately gonna conclude the Mine Thrower, one of my least favorite weapons in the entire franchise, frankly. Alrighty, people, we've reached the end of this weapon showcase. Time for the final weapon, the Rocket Launcher. A really recognizable one, too. It's the M202 Flash, same one from RE1. Let's check it out. M66 Rocket Launcher, an old but powerful weapon. Oh, ain't that the truth. But anyway, as I said, this is based off the M202 Flash, a four-barreled rocket launcher. So, the location of the rocket launcher, when using it regularly in the game, is down here in the lower floor of the boiler room of the Dead Factory. Now, you have to go through a bit of a process to get to this point. First of all, to get down here, you need the card key. Once you defeat Nemesis in the treatment room, but you also need the facility key that's coded with a special card, which the only way to do so is to first acquire the facility key regularly, then go to a machine that's right next to the water puzzle, insert it in there, and it will give you the facility key back with a specially coded card. Once you have both of those and you get down here, use the facility key on this locker, like so. And there's the awesome M202 Flash Rocket Launcher. With an appropriate four rockets, I might add. Now, of course, you could also unlock the rocket launcher with infinite ammo if you purchase it from the Mercenaries Buy screen for $4,000. And it's worth mentioning that Mikhail has the rocket launcher in his loadout when you're playing the mercenaries. His rocket launcher has eight total rockets. So here's Joe holding it in game. It is one bamf. Big ass mofo. She doesn't have her pose with this, nor the Gatling gun, I realized just now. It's because of the holding stance of this and the Gatling gun are the same. It doesn't allow her to do her pose with it. So let's just go ahead and straight test it. Here we go. <laughs> and as you can see, as she's gradually getting closer, it does knock her back a little bit. So yep, yeah, that's all there is to it. Now being the rocket launcher, we're gonna continue my tradition when it comes to this type of weapon. I'm just gonna test it on all sorts of enemies. Almost any enemy I can come across, I will test it on that enemy. So enjoy the explosive slideshow.
those are officially the weapons of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Now, to tell you about unusable weapons that are also featured in this game. First, the FIM-92 Stinger rocket launcher makes a return, as it is Nemesis's weapon that you get to see through occasional fights with him, and ultimately in the clock tower battle with him before he goes into his second phase. <laughs> Next, you got an AN-M14 incendiary grenade. This grenade is used by Mikhail specifically when he blows up Nemesis and himself in the cable car. Next, you got a generic grenade. No specific type is mentioned, but both Mikhail and Tyrell of the UBCS use one. Next, you also got a timed bomb explosive, a brick of C4 attached to an electric detonator. This explodes when Tyrell opens the safe in a specific cutscene if you choose the basement path with Carlos in the hospital. There's also an unusable sniper rifle embedded in one of the pre-rendered backgrounds here in the rail cannon room, and this apparently is the Accuracy International Arctic Welfare. This also means that Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is the first game where you see a sniper rifle, but it's unusable, so it's not the first game that you could use a sniper rifle. And finally, you got the rail cannon at the very end of the game. This is nicknamed the Demon Sword of Paracelsus. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> but yeah, this is what is renamed the finger in the remake of Resident Evil 3, but it's not a holdable weapon like in the remake. This is just this big ass battery operated thing that once you activate, it'll just continuously fire until you get Nemesis in his final form in the path of it. And that is officially going to conclude my ultimate weapon showcase of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Now being at the end of the review, we once again have to tally up the total amount of weapons and add it to the grand total of weapons in the entire series. So Resident Evil 1 had 10 weapons, Resident Evil 2 had 14 weapons, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis has a total of 12 weapons. Added all together, we have a grand total so far of 36 weapons. So that's going to conclude this weapon showcase. I really hope you enjoyed this video. So far, I've been having a really good time with these remastered showcases, probably because the original trilogy of games are just so fun for me to play. It has the utmost nostalgia factor out of any other game for me. And to play them in these seamless HD mods is just modernizing them to an extent that I would have never thought was originally possible. Really good stuff, having a really good time with these videos, and I hope you guys are too. So, this being the end of the classic trilogy, it feels like it's the end of a phase, sort of, in this remaking era. However, there is one more game that has the PS1-style blocky graphics, and that is the next game in the franchise, Resident Evil Survivor, the first spin-off of the franchise. Also, one of the lower-rated games of the franchise, unfortunately. But nonetheless, it's going to get a remastered showcase from yours truly and that will be the next one so look forward to that alrighty people this is shankster94 aka the gamer shankster slap a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell and set it to all so you know exactly when i upload a new video alrighty follow me on social media first you got x twitter one of the platforms i'm most active on today i love hanging out with resident evil mutuals there Check out my Facebook page. I don't use it that much other than to link my video uploads there, but you can always join it if you want to follow it. And check out my Patreon page to support me. Here's a list of my current active patrons right here. Their patronage is appreciated. And finally, join my Discord server if you haven't already, Shankster's Hub, because one of the coolest things about my channel nowadays is my Discord server. It's full of mutuals who enjoy my content and who are also Resident Evil fans themselves. And you can see these remastered showcases being developed behind the scenes, and you can be a part of the process that goes into them. So yeah, definitely join my Discord server if you haven't already.
Alrighty, people, that's gonna end it for this video, and I hope you all have a good day. Peace out.